to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Lord Jesus, make us worthy to celebrate with spiritual hymns your appearance to Thomas and your apostles. You desire to strengthen the faith of your Holy Church by inviting Thomas to put his, faith, his hand into your pure side. Strengthen our faith like his in the mystery of your glorious resurrection. Fill us with your hope and love so that we may raise glory to you, to your Father and to your living Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Peace be with the church and her children. Let us raise glory, honor, and praise to God the Father who sent his only begotten Son for the salvation of the world, and to the Son who filled the universe with the new light by his glorious resurrection, and to the Holy Spirit who embraced the hearts of the apostles with joy and peace. To the good one be glory and honor on this blessed Sunday and all the days of our lives and forever. our God, by your glorious resurrection, you gave joy to those in heaven and on earth, uniting them spiritually as one. Eight days later, you visited your holy apostles and entered the upper room, where they were gathered with the door shut. You invited Thomas to see and put his hand into your pierce, your side pierced by the lance, and touch your hands. Wounded by the nails, he proclaimed his faith, crying out, My Lord and my my God, and you made him a witness to your glorious resurrection. Therefore, we who have been saved by your victorious cross implore your grace and ask you with the fragrance of this incense to grant us the blessing that you promised to those who have not seen you and yet have believed. Make us worthy to celebrate this new Sunday with joy and gladness, and prepare us and our departed for that joyful and eternal feast, that we may raise glory and thanks to you, to your Father and to your living Holy Spirit forever.
O Christ our God, accept our incense as we commemorate your appearance to your apostle St. Thomas, as you were pleased by his faith and profession of your divinity. Accept our prayers and petitions in favor of we remember all the faithful departed who have died hoping in you, and grant them eternal rest. We raise glory and thanks to you now and forever. Kadishat Aloho Kadishat Hayatolo Kadishat Namo Yuto Shiho Kaumen Deret Mihite Yitra Thomas said, I have seen grant forgiveness, I shall go and preach your word. reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Father, give me your blessing. Praise to the Lord of St. Paul and the Apostles. May the mercy of God descend upon the reader, the listeners, and upon this parish and her children forever. Brothers and sisters, therefore, since we know the fear of the Lord, we try to persuade others, but we are clearly apparent to God, and I hope we're also apparent to your consciousness. We are not commending ourselves to you again, but giving you an opportunity to boast of us, so that you may have something to say to those who boast of external appearance rather than of the heart. For with, if we are out of our minds, it is for God. If we are rational, it's for you. For the love of Christ impels us once we have come to the conviction that one died for all, therefore all have died. He indeed died for all, so that those who live might no longer live for themselves, but for him who for their sake died and was raised. Consequently, from now on we regard no one according to the flesh, even if we once knew Christ according to the flesh, yet we now know him so no longer. 
So whoever is in Christ is in a new creation. The old things have passed away. Behold, new things have come. And all this is from God, who has reconciled us to himself through Christ and given us the ministry of reconciliation. Namely, God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting their trespasses against them and entrusting us to the message of reconciliation. So we are ambassadors for Christ. As if God were appealing through us, we implore you on behalf of Christ to be reconciled to God. For our sake, he made him to be sin who did not know sin, so that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Praise be to God always. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You have believed because you have seen. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet come to believe. to the praise, glory, and honor of the Most Holy Trinity. We burn this incense. Here they sing. Before the proclamation of the gospel of our Savior, announcing life for our souls, we offer this incense and ask for your mercy, O Lord. Peace be with you. From the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. John, who proclaimed life to the world, let us listen to the proclamation of life and salvation for our souls. You may silently listen to the Holy Gospel is about to be proclaimed to you. Listen and give glory and thanks to the Word of the Living God. The Apostle John writes, Now a week later, his disciples were again inside, and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and he stood in their midst and he said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and bring your hand and put it into my side, and do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and he said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus then said to him, You have come to believe because you have seen me. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book. But these were written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through this belief, you may have life in his name. This is the truth, peace be with you. If then anyone be in Christ, 
He is a new creation. The old things have passed away, and behold, all things are made anew. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. It is interesting to see that when St. Paul talks about his boasting, he begins by saying at the fear of God, that he stands in awe before God, and in this fear, he says, it's not for me to boast about myself, but to give you a reason for boasting and to give you an ability to give an answer to those people who are essentially superficial. He says to be able to give answer to those who judge things only by appearances and not by what is interior, what is within the heart. And to remember in this Semitic notion that whenever we speak about heart, it doesn't just simply mean, in our modern connotation, it means emotions or affection. The heart in this Semitic understanding is the person, the interior reality of the person. It's what we see in the devotion of the sacred heart. It's not our Lord's affections or his emotions. It's the question of the reality of his person, who is, in a sense, in truth, in compassion incarnate. This personal reality is this redemption of the world. And so St. Paul is asking them to go deeper into this reality and have the ability to answer those who are judging only by the surface, by the appearances of things. And then he goes in and he speaks about reconciliation. Today in our tradition, we call this New Sunday because New Sunday is the first Sunday or the first day of the resurrection following our Lord's appearance back among his apostles. And then of course, the incredulousness of, of Thomas the necessity of being able to see and to touch or else he won't believe. And so in the Syriac tradition, it, it connotates the reality of the sacramentality of the Sunday as a day of the eighth day. Seven days of creation, the day that follows of the first day of the week is the eighth day of the new creation. It's a movement from the Habdamad, from the seven days of creation of the Old Testament to the new creation, which is the eighth day. It's something that we'll consider more in depth next year. But it's also a movement from the ways of nature to the understanding of the spirit. This movement. It's why our Lord says to Thomas, you believe because you've seen me. Though all the apostles told you and the women told you that they have seen me, you wouldn't believe their testimony. And so our Lord says to him, you believe because you've seen, but blessed are those who have not seen and yet who believe because they accept the testimony. These other apostles around you, they've known you. You've been together for these last years. And you wouldn't accept their word. And so St. Thomas's proclamation of my Lord and my God, and before our Lord professing his divinity, is that transition from the ways of the flesh to the ways of the spirit. Which is why St. Paul also says in this epistle that you have in the bulletin, he says to you that if we knew Christ according to the flesh, we now no longer know him in this manner. This is a transition from merely the wonder-working rabbi who walked the streets of Galilee to the initiation and the inauguration of the entire new creation of the eighth day. That's why if you go into the Byzantine churches, you will always have the highest dome of the church will have this huge icon of Christ Pantocrator. Because Christ is still always God and man, but now he is not the baby born in Bethlehem. That is a historical past. He is now the God of creation who brings redemption and who brings reconciliation of heaven and earth together into one. And so he's seen as the all-powerful, pan kartor, and the one who is the highest dome normally in the architecture. In the Syriac tradition, we don't tend to decorate our churches as much, whereas the Byzantine tradition, every square inch has somebody looking at you some saint, some angel, someone is there to remind you that this place is sacred. In the Syriac tradition, everything is meant to be focused upon the altar and the window which is normally open over the altar for the morning sun when the church is actually faced geographically east. So we have our window, but it's artificially illuminated. But the idea is the same, unless the power goes out. 
So in the midst of this, between moving from a purely natural way of seeing things to the spiritual, St. Paul talks about this reconciliation. There's only two places really that St. Paul speaks about this theme. And of course, reconciliation is bringing two factions, two individuals together who at one point were inimical to one another. They were separated, they were divided. And then bringing them back to an amicable relation is that reconciliation. And so St. Paul speaks of it here. And then as we had the reading a few weeks ago, in Romans chapter five, he also talks about this reconciliation to bring the unity back of what God originally intended. If you read the book of Genesis when it's describing paradise, and of course paradise is just the Greek word for garden. So the garden which is called Eden, Eden meaning beautiful. The harmony of original creation when it's done and of Adam, of man being created, we have these beautiful poetic and quite charming in a sense um, representations of, of speaking of God walking in the garden and talking with Adam and Eve. And so, of course, it's meant to give a familiar, God doesn't have feet, so he doesn't walk along garden paths. So the reason why it's portrayed that way in the scripture is the intimacy of that presence of God with the creation of the human race in the harmony of the beautiful place, which is Paradesos. It's something of the image when it's springtime and one of you is out in the backyard raking to get up all that gunk from the wintertime and the other one swings open the door and says, I'm making lunch, what kind of a sandwich do you want? That kind of familiarity, God walking in the garden, the intimacy between the human race and God, which of course is shattered by Adam's decisions and choices that he makes. And so to bring these two together back again, God makes the initiative. It's God's desire in his son to bring this reconciliation. And what he's saying to us is that the individuals by their faith and their baptism who enter into Christ, always this termination, this terminology of in Christ, Christ within us, our Lord at the Last Supper, I am the vine, you are the branches. Without me, you can do nothing. That idea of being grafted into and being in Christ. St. Paul is giving us to understand that it's in Christ this reconciliation of the world takes place. And not only is there a new creation of humanity, but it's an entire new creation of the cosmos. The cross itself through the depths and the heights and the expanse of all of it. The Syriac tradition sees the cross as being the great unifying, identifying the cross with Christ. That's why we spent the time on Easter Sunday itself coming up to venerate and to adore the cross, the cross of light, the living cross, the life-giving cross. Because it's in Christ that this inauguration, so that the idea of our Lord's resurrection his ascension, his glory at the right hand of the Father, and then his definitive manifestation on the parousia, bringing all time to a conclusion, is all one movement. Which is why our Lord, during his time on earth, he said, if I be raised up, I shall draw all things to myself. Being raised up is an ambiguity, and it's meant to be that way in his speech. Because being raised up means being raised up on the cross of Calvary. But it also means being raised up in the resurrection and being raised up in the glorification of the ascension and the glory at the right hand of the Father. But if I am raised up in this glory and reconciliation, I will draw all things to myself. And so within the person of Christ, within this Messiah who brings this inauguration of an entire new creation, it's why St. Paul, the quotation that I gave you from the epistle today, he says, then if anyone be found in Christ, remember it's our faith and our baptism that engrafts us into Christ. He says, if anyone be found in Christ, he is a new creation. This is an entire new working of grace. And the old things have passed away. And behold, everything is made new. And hence, new Sunday. It's why, as much as some people have asked if we do Mercy Sunday, 
Mercy Sunday is a movement in the Latin church, which is beautiful, and I highly recommend making the novena from Good Friday. It's lovely. But we will always keep New Sunday because it's an ancient Syriac vision of what this day is. In the Latin church, we needed St. Faustina to tell us to give us a different name to what used to be called Low Sunday. So now we call it Mercy Sunday. It's a little nicer than Low Sunday. It was only called Low Sunday in contrast to the glorious feast eight days before, and now this one seems a bit of a letdown. But never in the Syriac tradition. New Sunday has always been glorious in its vision. So St. Paul immediately talks after he speaks about this new creation. He says, that, but this is by God. God has accomplished this renewal. But this is by God who has reconciled us to himself through Christ. And so that is the aspect of us to find again paradise, which is why in Lent, during the great fast, we make these references that our fasting and our prayer, our abstinence and our works of compassion are meant to bring us back into paradise, to bring us into this reconciliation, so that God who has reconciled us to himself through Christ and has given us this ministry of reconciliation. Now St. Paul is talking about himself and what the apostolic ministry is meant to do. Our Lord in his historical reality, this all took place 2,000 years ago. But the reality of the visibility of that reconciliation is an ongoing reality within the church, generation after generation. And he speaks of it as being a service, a ministry of reconciliation, which is all that ministry means. It's a service to bring that all the individuals to be born between now and that day of the definitive manifestation of Christ will have the ongoing work of bringing us into the intimacy once again of paradise and the communication with God on intimate terms. And St. Paul says, that's what I do. That's what has been confided to us in this ministry of reconciliation. And so it's a very beautiful image of the reality of the church which continues this reality of bringing together this reuniting of God in the intimacy and his grace. So that the ultimate source of salvation is the hidden father, the Genizo Abu, the hidden father who works in reconciling within Christ, but it's not accomplished without the faith on the part of the individual recipient. And that's why it requires always this a friendship and reciprocity. If you swung open that door and said, what would you like for the sandwich, and the other person just grunted and kept raking, you'd be offended. Or unless, of course, you know he doesn't hear very well, so you have to shout again. But if you really knew that they were just simply ignoring it and walking away, you'd be offended. And that's why the recipient always has to have that disposition to desire to enter into reconciliation. God, who, as St. Augustine says, God who has created us without us will not save us without us. It will always require that recipient. And so that's why he brings us to the center of the epistle today, that this is a mystic death and a moral death. It's just about the middle of the quotation you have today in the, in the bulletin. He says, because the charity of Christ, the love of Christ impels us, it urges us forward. This divine love that was found in Christ is poured out in us. And so St. Paul says that this charity of Christ urges us forward in this reconciliation. And judging this, knowing this, that one died for all, that Christ died for all, then he says all have died. We find this death within. So there's a mystical death within Christ. And then the immediate verse after points out that moral death, that moral life which is given to us. And as one died for all, that they also who live may live no longer for themselves, but for him who died for them and rose again. So in the understanding of this mystical death and our baptism and our faith in descending with Christ into the tomb and rising with him in glory through our baptism and our faith, 
He's saying that in understanding that, it's so that morally speaking, we die to ourselves and that we no longer live for our own purpose. It's not just about me and the bigger pool or the nicer car or the new set of clothes or whatever else, the things that we desire to have in this world, it doesn't mean that they are bad, but it means that they don't have a purpose in the long run. And so that no longer to live for themselves, but to live for the one who died and arose from the dead for us. So there's a mystic death and there is a moral death to self and the recipient that St. Paul is speaking about in this letter today. And that's really the heart of the matter when he says, I want you to consider these things so that you can boast. So that you can give an answer to those who only judge superficially and only see appearances. But in understanding that, it means we have to enter individually more in depth with ourselves into this mystical death and this moral death to our selfishness. So these two aspects is why St. Paul finishes by saying that the basis of this whole ministry of reconciliation, he says, is why we are ambassadors. The apostles, the priesthood, we are ambassadors. And he says, God, as it were, urging you, exhorting you to find this reconciliation and to enter back into this friendship with God. For we, for Christ, therefore, we are ambassadors. God, as it were, exhorting you through us. And to leave you with that final thought, it's not just us, the apostles, the priests, but it is also that you are meant to be mouthpieces, voices as ambassadors also outside the church for the people that you come in contact with. That through that charity and that love of Christ, you communicate to them this ability to enter into this reconciliation and to expand that work of life, which is the gospel. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen.
Itelot madeb heida locho, alvota locho dam haritarius. Wayam sulot aibota hafel dal baitam westude. Hayat lo special hymn. Lord in God, you accepted the offerings of our ancestors. Now accept this offering that your children have brought to you. Out of their love for you and for your holy name, shower your spiritual blessings upon them and in place of their earthly gifts, grant them life and your imperishable kingdom. Amen. As we remember our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ and his plan of salvation for us, we recall upon this offering all those who have pleased God from Adam to this day, especially Mary, the Blessed Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her spouse, the Saints Mary, Saint Jude, and Saint John. Remember, O God, the children of the Holy Church, our fathers and mothers, and our brothers and sisters, both the living and the departed, especially those for whom this sacrifice is offered, for the intentions of all the members of this parish. Remember also all those who share with us today in this offering. Son and to the Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. Lord God and Father, holy and glorious is your name. You deliver those. 
who love you from all that is contrary to your will. May we who have remained in your divine love be made worthy to give one another the greeting of peace with the holy kiss. May we always speak words of peace, think of peace, and work for peace. Through the grace of your only Son and his love for all people, we raise glory to you, to your living Holy Spirit, now and forever. Peace to you, holy altar of God. Peace to the holy mysteries placed upon you. Peace to you, O minister of God. Peace to you, O server of the Holy Spirit. Let each one of us give a greeting of peace to his neighbor with love and faith, which is pleasing to the Lord. Peace reconciling those who are enemies. You are forgiveness to those who sin. You are comfort to those who are sorrowful. Open the door of your mercy to our petitions, and in the year of the abundance of your grace, accept our prayers. Make us children and heirs of your kingdom through the grace of your only Son and his love for all people, and through your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Adored by all angels, bless you, humanity exalts you, and all creation glorifies you. Look upon your children who call out to you with purity and holiness. May we offer you an acceptable sacrifice that we may raise glory to you, to your only Son, and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. The love of God the Father and the grace of the only begotten Son and the communion and indwelling of the Holy Spirit be with you my brothers and sisters forever and with your spirit let us lift up our thoughts our minds and our hearts we lift them up to the Lord let us give thanks to the Lord with reverence and worship him with humility it is right and just. Truly it is right and just to thank, adore, glorify, and bless the majesty of the one consubstantial Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, our majesty that does not need our glory or become greater with our things. O Lord, those who sing your praises are countless, and they cry out with angelic voices, and with sweet melodies proclaiming, exalted our weak human nature. In your mercy you sent your only Son into the world for our salvation. He dawned from the Holy Virgin like a ray of light from a bright cloud. He took the form of a slave, yet truly he is the Son of your majesty. 
He willingly became man to make us divine. He was born from a woman's womb that we may be born again from a spiritual womb. He became our brother so that through his grace we may become your children and heirs. He took us from being slaves and made us your children. He promised us a share in the reward that allows us to call you Abba, Father. He cleansed us from our sins with his precious blood that he poured out for us. For he is your only Son, Kyrie eleison. Wabiyamu khaduktum kharshun ilayim abid khayim. In sabi lachma bidao kari shanto. O barakhu kadesh. Waksu ya bir tarmidao kari mara. Sabakhu lam mehne. Hulu, <laughs> Kanno Alkoso Damsich Women Hamro Men Mayo Barahu Kadesh Abel Talmidao Kado Mara Sabish Tawa Mehene Kulhu O no Jenny Tao Demohu Deal Dia Tiki Hudato Dachlo faikun, wachlo sagie, mete shadu meti hem. Chusun yod, chalme wa chalme, dal alam alamin. Do this in memory of me. Each time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you remember my death until I come again. We remember your death, O Lord. We profess your resurrection. We await your second coming. We implore your mercy and compassion. We ask for the forgiveness of sins. May your mercy rest upon us. O Word of God, who can comprehend that you willingly emptied yourself of your divine glory? Who can explain your miraculous birth from a virgin? Who can repay you for your saving passion which you freely endured? Who can praise your plan of salvation for us? We can only ask of you, O lover of all people, that the sacrifice which we have offered be accepted on your holy altar in heaven the dwelling place of your hidden divinity in the company of all the angels and saints. Through this sacrifice may be we worthy of the forgiveness of all our sins. When you come to judge the living and the dead, do not pass judgment upon us, nor deny us, saying, I do not know you. On that glorious and fearful day, do not separate us from you nor cast us out of your paradise to a place of weeping and gnashing of teeth. Rather, because of your holy name, by which we have been called, look with mercy upon us. In your compassion you have made us worthy of the gift of your forgiving body and blood. So make us worthy to be one with you in holiness as you are one with your Father. For this your church implores you, and through you and with you implores your Father, saying, Have mercy on us, Almighty Father, have mercy on us. O Lord, as we, your sinful children, receive your graces, we thank you for them and because of them. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We profess our faith in you and we ask you, have compassion on us, O God, have mercy on us and hear us. How awesome.
awesome is this moment, O oh my beloved, for the living Holy Spirit descends and rests upon this offering for our sanctification. Let us stand with reverence as we pray. Animonio, 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 Nite Modro Hofayo Kadisho, O Nahena Lainu Ala Cordobono, O no. Spread the body of Christ, our God, be for us the pledge of life to come, the body that grants us the everlasting joys of heaven, a body that renews our souls and bodies, a body that purifies us of all sin for eternal life. Amen. And of the mixture in this chalice, the blood of Christ, our God, be a blood that gives new life to those who receive it, a blood that guides us to the safe harbors and the dwellings of life. A blood that renews our souls and bodies, a blood that purifies us of all sin for eternal life. Amen. O oh Lord, in your great mercy, when this body and blood is mingled with our bodies and souls, grant that it may be for the pardon of faults, the forgiveness of sins, and for the everlasting joy and eternal life with all your saints. Amen. We offer you, Lord God, this pure and holy offering for your holy, Catholic, and apostolic church which you have redeemed. Gather her children into unity, love, and faith, and guide them in peace and security. We offer it for the pure bishops of the true faith, Francis, the Pope of Rome, Ashara Peter, our Patriarch of Antioch, Nisrala Peter, our retired Patriarch, Gregory John, our Bishop, the Venerable Priests, the chaste deacons, the pure subdeacons, and all the orders of the church. Teach them the word of truth, so that they may spread it faithfully. With justice and holiness, may they care for the flock that you have entrusted to them. Guide them, give them the proper means to accomplish your will, and grant them a long life. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remember, O Lord of goodness, your holy church, and have mercy on all her faithful. In your compassion, heal all the wounded and injured among your flock. Punish injustice and strengthen all our brothers and sisters. Bestow the grace of conversion on all. With your indestructible power, strengthen the bishops of the true faith, that they may be upright and courageous in their apostolic office. May they show fidelity as they stand ever before your eternal justice. Unto your honor and glory, may they prove themselves upright, dauntless, and persevering in the task confided to them. To lead all the faithful into the fullness of your redeeming light and glory, we pray to you, O Lord. For the poor and dejected, for orphans and widows, for sick and the distressed, for those tempted by evil spirits, be the guardian and refuge of their lives. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remember the Holy Fathers, prophets, apostles, preachers, evangelists, martyrs, and confessors especially the holy, glorious, and blessed ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of God, St. John the Baptist, the messenger and forerunner, who witnessed the betrothal of your holy church to your son, glorious St. Stephen, the archdeacon and first martyr, and all who pleased you and professed your name, we pray to you, O Lord. the faithful departed who have gone to you from this altar and from every place throughout the world, grant them rest in your heavenly dwellings with all your saints, and in your mercy forgive our sins and theirs. Grant rest, O God, to the departed, and forgive the sins we have committed, 
with or without flaw. O Lord, do not deprive us of your mercy, but keep us in the palm of your hand, lest we fall and go astray, so that we may walk on your paths, follow your ways, and do your will. Forgive us and our departed, and pardon all sins and transgressions, hidden and seen, committed with or without full knowledge. Make us worthy of a faithful Christian death that is pleasing to you, and join us to your righteous ones and to those who have done your will, that in all and in all things your blessed name may be glorified with the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and of your living Holy Spirit, now and forever. As it was, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. sent us your only Son, who is the radiance of your eternity. And he accomplished his plan of salvation for us, that we may come to you. May we call upon you the prayer that he taught his holy disciples, the saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Yes, O merciful Lord, we ask for your compassion. By your grace, make us worthy that your glorious name may be made holy in us that your kingdom come to assist us in our weakness, and that your will dwell within us. Deliver us from all difficult temptations, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, with your only Son and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads before the God of mercy, before his forgiving altar, and before the body and blood of our Savior, who gives life to those who partake of him, and receive the blessing from the Lord. O Lord God, you are good and lover of all people. Look upon those who bow their heads before your majesty, and bless them with every spiritual blessing. Do not turn us away when we approach your divine and holy gifts, and let us not be guilty of unworthily receiving the body and blood of your only Son. Rather, make us worthy to share in your holy and life-giving mysteries with purity. We may raise glory and thanks to you, to your only Son, and to your good and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. The grace of the Most Holy Trinity, eternal and consubstantial, be with you, my brothers and sisters, forever. Amen. Let each one of us look to God with reverence and humility and ask him for mercy and compassion. Holy gifts for the holy, with perfection, purity, and sanctity. One, one holy, holy Father, Father, one holy Son, one Holy Spirit, 
Blessed be the name of the Lord, for he is one in heaven and on earth. To him be glory forever. Make, Make us worthy, O Lord God, God, so that our bodies may be sanctified by your holy love, and our souls purified by your forgiving blood. May our communion be for the forgiveness of our sins and for your life. O Lord our God, to you be glory.
Again and again we thank you, O Lord, and raise glory to you for giving us your body to eat and your living blood to drink. O lover of all people, have mercy on us. Lord Jesus, you have made us worthy to share in your holy body and in the cup of salvation. How can we repay you for these your gifts and graces and for your goodness? As you have called us to approach this life-giving banquet, make us worthy, so that your body may be mingled with our bodies and your blood with our souls, for the pardon of faults, the forgiveness of sins, and eternal life. You are blessed and your kingdom is holy, and we raise glory to you, to your Father, and to your Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. O oh God the Father, we bow before you and entrust ourselves to your care. We ask you, imploring your mercy, to rest your right hand full of blessings upon us. Assist us, protect us. Bless us and sanctify us by the Holy Cross of your only Son. We glorify and honor you, your only Son, and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Mishiho komen kabro. Shariro yitha kom. So I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for your gifts this, at Easter time. So thank you very much for your generosity. It's quite beautiful.
You'll also notice on the more negative side, though, is that we're only halfway towards our Lenten assessment. Anything that's below the 4000 we just pay out of our account, which is already $40,000 a year in deficit. So, we're just throwing a word out to the wise. I did write a five-page letter to the bishop to say, please lower our assessments. And he wrote back in a very Bishop Gregory way, gentle and kind and encouraging, to say, you're doing wonderfully. <laughs> You've made magnificent advances in your endowment. We don't make the assessments based upon cash flow on a monthly basis, so you run short. You're doing better than many parishes. Fundraising needs to be your central focus point. It gets everyone working together, and it boosts morale by working together as one. So that was the letter. And I talked to him on Wednesday of this past week, and again he was gracious and kind and said, I have no intention of closing St. Joseph, so you better make it work. <laughs> and so that's just a word for the wise. And so that leaves you on the last point. As ambassadors, you are also the voice of God to the people around you. God has made it stop raining on our heads for the first time today in three weeks. So please encourage, and as ambassadors, come back this evening for the Lebanese Supper. It's one of those fundraisers. Plus, you will also be able to purchase the book of Cor Bishop Yid that we've reprinted in a beautiful edition on the life of St. Charbel, which I think is actually probably the best introduction to St. Charbel, written by the vice postulator for the cause of his beatification, which is why we worked at reprinting it. So that will be on sale also this evening. So each of you come back this evening with ravenous appetites, with at least three in tow, and we will do good for this evening. So go in peace, my beloved brothers and sisters, with the nourishment and blessings you have received from the forgiving altar of the Lord. May the blessing of the Most Holy Trinity accompany you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, the one God, to whom be glory forever.